Before I get into the topic of this video, I need to deal with a couple of things from the last one. And the first of that is the decimator, and how it doesn't play exactly the same for each playthrough. Now this has nothing to do with a failing on the seed number and how that plays out. It all works exactly the same through each playthrough, but rather it's to do with how the decimator itself cycles extremely quickly to create its own effect. Now I dealt with this in a previous video last year, new music, old issues, and it's the same thing here. What's happening is that the decimator or other effects like it, either running on their own really fast or working in conjunction with something else really fast, they are fast enough such that they are not in sync with the sample rate of the application. And that causes them to play out slightly differently during each playback. This affects almost no other effects because they're not running that fast and so this doesn't actually matter for them, but for something like the decimator it does, and as you can hear and see on the waveforms, it does have a noticeable effect. There's nothing you can really do about this, it's just something to keep in mind if you ever use one of these effects that works through really rapid cycling. And again, if I render out two exact copies of the same song, you will see noticeable differences because the decimator was applied to most of the percussion samples in the last video. Now, the next thing that I need to deal with is that. And that is the mouth instrument. When certain settings come together for the decimator, then it's much louder than the rest of the music. And so I need to come up with a way to tamp down on that. So while doing this, what I don't want to happen is for this to have too much of an effect on the other versions of the mouth instrument. And it's really just the high frequencies that are piercing through too much. And so I can create an effects chain and use the multiband send to go to another effects chain and send the default settings will be fine, but send the high frequencies to that. And in here, I will use the compressor and drums hard will be fine as long as we bring the makeup gain back down to zero. That's good enough for now. If I need to make further adjustments later on, they can just come in here and adjust some settings, or maybe add another compressor into the midsection. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so let's get started on the actual topic of this video, which is adjusting the scale and key of the two melodic instruments, the pad and the glock. The scale and key, they're part of the instrument properties. And if you didn't know, you can use the instrument MIDI control device to make those changes. What you need to do is send to the instrument that you want the CC numbers of 14 and 15. There you go. You can see the change has been made there. I go into more detail on this in the official Renoise video, Scale and Key, so if you're interested, check that out. Right, now to find the best method of connecting the seed number to the instrument MIDI control device. I can just do this directly, like this, and that will be decent because this will still play the same each time the song is played through, but there is now a direct correlation between the input, the seed number here, and whatever scale and key is going to be selected. 
higher this is, the higher that's going to be. What I actually want is more unpredictability, so someone can't come in and just choose what they want, and they know exactly what they're going to get for the scale and key, which is why all the other connections here were made to separate devices with random values. And that's a shame, because you can, through the Hydra, restrict what the values are going to be. And that's important for scaling key, because uh, there are 12 keys, so the value is going to be 0 to 11, and there are 35 scales, so that will be 1 to 35 for the scales themselves, and 0, 0 for the off mode. So it's a shame that we can't use this here. One possibility would be to use the LFO in custom envelope mode, set the frequency down to 0 or infinite LPC so that it doesn't move, and process random points. That way, when the seed number is directed towards the reset, then it will choose that step and the value associated with it. But I will need two LFOs, one for the scale and one for the key, and because i just shown you'd need to restrict the values, and then each LFO would then need to be sent to its own individual Hydra, and things just quickly get a bit messy. You might be thinking, well, just code in the scripting terminal and restrict the value range through there. However, unlike the previous videos, this isn't actually possible here, because as of this recording in Renoise 3.4, you cannot use the API to directly address the points of a custom envelope in LFOs. But the real reason for not using this is because it will be set just once, right at the start of the song, when the seed is set. That would be fine if you only ever want to use the one scale and key, but the point of this is to make interesting changes throughout the song structure, and so you would want to be able to change this maybe once per pattern or whatever. And that is just not possible by using the LFO. And so I'm now finally at the point of having to use the formula device. I started off using something real simple to test this, and immediately ran into a problem. You have the random seed going from A, which is the input here. Multiply by a thousand because you want to go from three decimal places up to a whole number, which is what the seed will use, and return a random result, supposedly. But what the hell is this? It's both weak and linear. So do that, and now it's just linear. This is the complete opposite of what you want. You want something random, not predictable. So, I tested this in the scripting terminal, came up with a simple thing, and 111222, which is just what I saw. Try it again with a thousand. You get this, which is just a larger range, and then 10,000, and the same thing again. Now, some of you are familiar with this, or probably rolling their eyes, but this is not something that I knew. What the random seed actually does is base the next result on the previous result. So the first time you run this, it doesn't have anything to work with, and you just get that linear sequence. So you need to initially do it one time. And then it actually works. So here in the formula, we'll need to do the same. And speaking of things I didn't know, if you have the scripting terminal editor open while you're working in the formula, it'll help you bug fix by giving you extra error messages. That's pretty cool. So I've inserted an extra random here, and now the output should be random based on the seed. There we go. It finally works. So, I was ready to move on to the final section, but I came across something else. 
and I've got a new blank song so that it's easy to understand what's going on. Now, the Hydra, with the seed value, going into the four formula devices, all running the same code. You have the random seed coming from the seed value, and then a random value which is produced every line. And since every formula device is identical, you would expect to see these values going in tandem per line. Hmm, not what we want at all. So what's actually going on? Well, let's run it for one line and take note of the values. 10.5, 91.6, 28.6, 66.4. And turn off these formula devices and run it again. 10.5, 91.6, 28.6, and 66.4. This means, unlike what I naturally assumed, is that this random number generator is not self contained within each formula device. It is, in fact, running application wide. What this means is that. Despite what I said about using the secondary Hydra devices, this is now necessary so that the same values can be sent for the scale and the key to both the pad instrument and the clock instrument. It does mean that uh, I can restrict things here in the Hydra device, so that they're 0 and 35 and 0 and 11, instead of relying on doing that in the formula device, though I did work out what those values would be. I'll just leave them commented out in case I want to use that in the future. Now, I haven't tried this before. It all works, but I've no idea what it sounds like. The notes here may or may not be good for certain keys or scales. How that's restricted, I don't know how it's going to play out. Uh, for the pad here, and also in the phrases of the Glock, there's a wide range of notes and this might not work out very well at all. I guess we're going to see. So, go to start in the master track and put in a new seed number. And if this doesn't sound completely horrific, then I guess this is going to play us out. Thank you.